Have you ever found yourself wishing that you communicated your emotional experience better in a relationship? Have you ever wanted to communicate your emotional experience in a relationship but found that you're not 100% sure how? If you relate to those things, you're in good company. There's a lot of people in the world who feel exactly that way and they search for better ways to do that. And I was one of those people as well early in my growth process. And thankfully, good people showed up and shared information like the piece of information I'm going to share with you today. Today is a simple reminder on com our communication boundary, how to verbalize a boundary in a relationship, whether it's a friend, a loved one, a family member, a significant other. When we are in relation with people, we're going to see their behaviors and they're going to see our behaviors. And a good rule of thumb that I, when I'm working with my clients, I remind them is you can't just go to someone with one example of a behavior and expect them to change, right? And well, we can't really expect anybody to change. That can be really dangerous grounds. But what, what I would say is that you, you've got to come with examples. You, you've got, if you don't like something, that's happening in a relationship, for instance. Let's say, um, you know, someone is engaged in a behavior that really annoys you, right? But, you know, you can tolerate it enough. Uh, it's, it's not so destructive in the relationship, but you know that you guys want to talk about change or maybe you have talked about changing that behavior before, but uh, nothing's happened. Well, you want to take at least three examples is is the rule of thumb so let's say somebody doesn't fold the laundry the way that you want them to you've got to take to them at least three different examples of the way that they haven't folded it the way that you wanted them to to be able to communicate it to them so it goes something like this when you bunch up the laundry in big balls right when you throw all the laundry on the bed and leave them for days when you throw all the dirty laundry in the corner I feel X, Y, and Z, and my request is that we put the dirty laundry here. When it's done, we fold it, and we put it away here. Now, if you notice, I gave examples. I communicated my emotional experience, and I made a vulnerable request. These are the layers of what we would call a talking boundary. I notice the behavior, all right? Notice it's not an attack. You do this, you do that, you, you've done that, you're, you're doing this. It's, I noticed this behavior, all right? I feel hurt by it. I feel anxious when I see the laundry that's laying everywhere. I uh, feel upset because we've had this conversation and I feel like I'm not heard. I feel. And the importance of I feel is extremely uh, necessary because it's not attacking. It doesn't pin anybody in a corner. And the most important piece is that nobody can deny your reality of what you're feeling. All right. So if you communicate that you notice the behavior, right, that's the, the part that maybe people could refute. Maybe they could say whatever they want about uh, the, uh, the laundry behavior, right? But if you bring multiple examples at a certain point, it's going to be really hard to refute. But when they can't refute it is when you share how you're feeling about it, right? Because no one can deny your reality. No one can deny what you feel, all right? And then once we've communicated that we've seen the behavior, this is how I feel about it, then we can make a vulnerable request. And I want to be really clear, right? There are some relationships out there with people where you could clear as day, communicate what you've witnessed, how you're feeling, and make a vulnerable request. But if they're the type of personality that's manipulative, they're the type of personality that is uh, hurtful for no reason, or they have a really hard time taking accountability, then uh, it's going to be really hard to get a boundary communicated from your perspective, right? Because, well, I'll be honest with you, they just don't care. And you can't change them to care. So you have a couple options there. You either start to realize that when you're holding personal boundaries, they don't care and you need to get yourself out of that situation because that's not a relationship. Or your boundary needs to become a broken record because the situation and the dynamic in the relationship has become so used to nobody 
holding accountability that it's going to take a lot of time. And I would say that's probably the vast majority of relationships that are having this type of distress is that there hasn't been a lot of communication of boundaries. And so trying to hold new ones is going to take time. And so with especially our talking boundaries, they're a broken record. So let's say you communicate the behavior you've experienced, how you feel about it, and make a vulnerable request. And they say, no, I don't really see it that way. Well, guess what? It's not about how they see it. You're communicating a boundary for you. You don't like the way this makes you feel, so you restate it. You know, if I state to someone, I feel upset, and they say, you know, um, well, why would you feel upset about this? I don't then justify why I'm upset. I share with them when, l let's say somebody says hur something hurtful, right? They, they've made a derogatory comment. When you say something hurtful, I feel hurt. Well, you're being, you're being a wuss. When you say something hurtful, I feel hurt. Well, I don't know why you always have to be so hurt all the time. When you say hurtful things, I feel hurt, all right? You've already said that. I, like, I don't understand why you get so hurt about things. When you say hurtful things, I feel hurt. Notice, I didn't change the way I'm communicating how I feel just because they have some kind of other way they wanna justify bad behavior. I don't change my boundaries personally, and my boundary in that situation is that I feel hurt. That's a boundary, all right? I'm not gonna just sit and be hurt by hurtful things without talking and communicating and standing up for myself. This is also a part of assertiveness. I'm going to communicate my emotional experiences because I deserve to take the space that I'm afforded. I deserve to communicate what my experiences are. And what I found in my life is that the people who are willing to respect that are those who have remained in my life. And the ones who don't and weren't willing to respect that, they're not around anymore. And that's an, that, that, I guess, is ultimately the bridge. Is like, if my boundaries have to be a broken record, I'll give that opportunity to good people, right? I, I won't um, be upset with someone if I have to communicate over and over again that I'm feeling hurt as long as at a certain point it's respected. But if I've tried 10, 20 times and that person isn't going to change and they continue to engage in the same behavior that violates the way that I feel, then I have to take accountability and ask myself, why do I continue to show up here when I already know what's going to happen? That becomes then my physical boundary. I'm going to take physical space and no longer associate with that person. So communicating our boundaries isn't exactly easy <clears throat> and it takes time to practice. But I would encourage you to start using those I statements. If somebody's engaging in a behavior in your life that's hurtful, right, or that you don't like, bring examples and be as calm as you can, be as respectful as you can, bring examples of what those behaviors are, communicate how you're feeling about it, all right? I feel anxious or I feel hurt or I feel sad, I feel upset, I feel unheard. Bring your feelings through I statements and then at that point, you can make some vulnerable requests. Like, and I would like it if, if that behavior could change, or I'd like it if in our interaction that didn't happen, All right? You don't always have to make the vulnerable request, and especially if they're not gonna, um, you know, if they don't have a track record of listening to your vulnerable requests, and maybe we don't add that part, you just share how you're feeling. And at a certain point, I guess what I would say really, even to any of my clients is, if you've attempted multiple times and it's still hurtful and they're not making any marked changes, then the next is a physical boundary and that physical boundary is space. And, and that's something we can talk about in further videos of how to get that space. But a really good way to start with that is by getting with a therapist and taking some space even if it's just for an hour a week to talk to someone about the things that are distressing you in relationships. So I would encourage you to talk to someone about those things if you related to some of the information today and want to practice some of these things a little bit more in depth. Uh, as always, if uh, you're listening to this and you struggle in other ways, maybe you struggle with uh, some unmanageable substance use, right, or, or you've had a history of that, I would encourage you look into 12-step recovery support groups, Alcoholics Anonymous. They're the people who are going to help you find long-term sobriety and lasting recovery. 
if you're a friend or family member of someone who's struggling with substance use or another type of unmanageable behavior, then I would encourage you to look into the program of Al-Anon. These are a group of friends and family members of alcoholics and those who struggle with various addictions, and they can help you find the answers on how to detach and how to find peace and serenity in your life. But as always, those are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear more of your thoughts in the comments below, and that's all we got for today. Take care.